When we look at the work of other Spanish artists besides Velázquez in the 17th century in Spain, we see a strong influence of Catholicism and a strong influence of Caravaggio's work from Italy. It's unknown whether the artist Francisco de Zuberon ever visited Italy or actually even directly saw the work of Caravaggio, but he uses a similar dramatic style and strong contrast between lights and darks. His works, like the Immaculate Conception, are often intensely focused on only a single figure, and we see a focus here on the Virgin Mary, with literally cloudy objects appearing in the background that symbolize the Immaculate Conception. At the base of the painting, we see a landscape which is intended to be the Holy Land, but overall, the drama and the imagination of this painting really mark it as still part of the more dramatic 17th century, rather than the more predictable art of the 16th century. Other Spanish artists like José de Ribera actually left Spain entirely and he was so interested in Italian artists and Italian styles that he goes to Italy, and specifically to Rome, where he works as a painter and becomes a member of the Guild of St. Luke, which was the Painter's Guild. And his works were exclusively created in Rome under the influence of Italian artists, again, like Caravaggio. His work is often noted as having a debt to Caravaggio. But because of his Spanish birth and his sta status as an expat, his works were frequently bought by Spanish travelers, and many of them have made their way back to Spain. This painting, The Martyrdom of St. Philip, for instance, is in the Prado in Madrid today. Like de Zubron, he uses a dramatic light and dark, a dramatic contrast, that many art historians have attributed to Caravaggio, but the other similarity to Caravaggio we see in Ribera's work is his relentless realism. Here with St. Philip we see him being hoisted painfully to his crucifixion, and we see an intense attention to detail. We see those muscles of his arms as they're pulled and tortured, being nearly ripped out of his sockets as they are hanging his body weight from his arms. We see the passion of his religion, but also some hint of fear and pain in his eyes. We see the cruelty in the faces of his torturers, particularly the man in red on the right-hand side who pulls his feet out from under him, and the boredom and nonchalance of the, the onlookers who are here to see just another torturous spectacle. When we think about de Ribera's work, we can see that, like other artists of the 17th century, rather than having a really strong, balanced composition, this is a more dispersed composition. And the bodies are twisted and in awkward positions that owe a debt to the mannerism of the 16th century. But overall, this work and the Italian work that we saw on Monday really show us that the 17th century, while it has a lot of debts to the 16th century, is a time of growth and drama and new ideas in art.